Hello and welcome to the Scatterplot Movies Part 6. Um, and this is a special part because it was not planned at all to do it. Um, but in the discussion about the Scatterplots, um, I came up with the idea to uh, show the same uh, signals uh, within the continuous flow diagrams, the CFD. Um, and uh, some of the guys who discussed with me just asked me whether it's possible to do it in the Scatterplot movies uh, too. So here um, the part 6 shows how you see exactly the same effects in the CFD as in the Scatterplot itself. Um, therefore I just took the big elephant um, um, example, the number 3 I think, um, and I added um, the functionality of a continuous flow diagram. Um, here in this part of the simulator uh, you will see um, if you run it uh, the start and the uh, estimated completion dates of the projects. And if you want to draw um, a continuous flow diagram you have to calculate how much um, of the projects were started um, in some point in time. It's some kind of an aggregated counting of the inflow and the aggregated counting of the, of the outflow. And here uh, these are the time slots in cycles and this simple formula, oh you don't see it I think so, second, wait a second, here it's a formula, um, it's a counting uh, formula um, according to these time frames. Um, you will see the number of inflow projects will grow and after a while if they are finished um, the number of finished projects will grow also. So now back again. Um, I hope I manage it to get it right here. So um, a little up and in this diagram below you will see uh, the continuous flow diagram growing. So I just start. Um, okay, what, what did I change here? I have here a lot of normal projects and normally this uh, capacity fits uh, completely perfect fine um, if, they, if the project start every 12th cycle. And you see here at the cycle 34 um, I start a few projects too much. Uh, so there's no difference, no staggering. Uh, and then at 45 I start 3 again and 50 and 60. And after that I wait until um, the normal um, staggering. And um, here it's a difference uh, of 12 in between. So after this uh, everything is back to normal. Um, yes, and now we just run it and this uh, just means that in some point in time there is a much too much work in progress um, in the portfolio and that means uh, nothing else that a lot of projects has to go into the red and black and um, now let's have a look what happens with a continuous flow diagram. I, I, I um, explain the flow diagram afterwards. So let's have a look. So now you see uh, the projects running upwards. Here everything is normal and fine. They are just uh, moving upwards and now the projects are started. The much too much projects are started and you see the negative multitasking in here and the dots are going into the black. They are go far above the buffer consumption and now it's back to normal. You're back to normal and the projects are walking upwards to 45 degree. So now let's have a look at the CFD. Um, that's just counting the project started within a time frame. Um, you have to multiply this by 10 to get the cycles. So until the 13th cycle everything is pretty normal here. Um, and the projects were finished with a, within a reasonable time frame. Then 
uh, there are started too much projects and you immediately see on the x-axis that's uh, lead time and on the uh, y-axis um, it's the inventory of open projects and you see immediately if you start too much projects um, the lead time the, the mean lead time is growing um, rapidly and after a while uh, I stop starting that's here and in that moment you stop starting new projects um, the uh, lead time is going back to normal so uh, normally you do it really like this you uh, paint in such a continuous flow diagram um, some lines in that's done like this um, normally in a good in a good continuous flow diagram you have um, a line like this that is the inflow line and you have an outflow line and they have to be parallel um, if you start too much projects then it looks like this the inflow line is much uh, higher and in that moment the outflow line um, is like this and that's a very dramatic situation you have much more inflow and the outflow is decreasing and the um, uh, lead time is increasing rapidly after a while when you stop starting the projects the situation just goes the other way around you you finish um, projects you don't start anymore you finish projects and that's a good way uh, that means that you recover lead time and after a while the inventory is uh, back to normal to a very uh, small size um, and the duration the lead time is back to normal and after this crisis you have the normal situation again of parallel lines so it's really like this you have um, three different um, um, situations this is well I don't know where, where I can do this okay this is the situation A that is normal this is here you have a situation A back here that's normal again then you have a situation B that's here that's crisis that is in the moment um, when the inflow is higher than the outflow and you have a, a zone C and C means nothing else than recovery so that is a continuous flow diagram you just aggregate uh, you count each time uh, uh, when a new project is started and you just add the number of projects and you count the number of projects finished over the time and um, I really think this is a very very strong and powerful diagram and um, what's the learning for me in here is you can draw this diagram without any toolings you just have to look at when you start your work package uh, your subtask your project um, and you have to uh, watch when it's finished and it's easily to draw this without any critical chain or anything like this it's just um, some accounting stuff uh, normally you should have this data um, and you can draw the diagram and um, you have the same uh, information as in the scatter plots itself so uh, thank you a lot for this idea and you obviously see that it fits perfectly together thank you a lot and uh, yes i'm looking forward of uh, getting such interesting questions um, to show with the simulator thank you bye bye